What's up guys, it's Mitch here from the DIY Recording Studio.com and today we're looking at part two of the most recent DIY project that I've had in the studio. It's this shelf that I built behind me right here. It doubles as a rack space for all my new equipment that I've got recently. And most importantly, it fits my new Behringer patch bay that I recently did a video on. If you haven't caught that, I'll put the link here. And if you're interested in purchasing a patch bay for your own studio, I'll pop a link down below. I set out to build this new shelf that doubles as a rack space, basically because I needed more space on my desk. I was sick of mucking around with the backs of all my gear and repatching and unpatching stuff. So I wanted to have a very easy workflow uh, when I'm using all of my outboard equipment. And I also needed something that would fit both my larger monitor that I use for a lot of the editing that I do, especially in audio, and then my laptop, which was gonna double as my second screen or my mix window for audio projects. And also as a second screen for any color grading I might do in video projects. It was an awesome build. It was my first time building anything like this. I'm by no means a carpenter or good at woodwork or any of that kind of stuff. I'm kind of just learning as I go. And I think anyone could kind of build something like this to make their space more functional. If you're interested to see the build, let's jump into it. So first off, I had to start by unplugging all my cables that you can see here. And the main problem with all of this was basically that every time I had to, or rather wanted to um, repatch something into my new preamp, say I wanted to record a microphone, or maybe I wanted to use one of my EQs coming out of the existing interface, I would have to always hardwire and patch stuff. So that was a pain in the butt. So I unpatched all the gear there. The other problem was that I was gonna need a bigger rack to fit all this new gear. Um, so I thought, why not make it a complete stand that covers my whole desk that my speakers can actually sit on as well. And it was also a good opportunity to tidy up all the cabling that you can see on the floor there and manage them in a much better way. All right, so I've got my original shelf here um, that my interfaces were sitting on. And then I've got the new bits of pine that we're uh, going to be using to extend it to a three bay um, shelf. So what I'm going to do now is basically measure it out for all the bits of wood. I'm going to undo these and probably reuse these two um, rack space dividers. And then I'll need six in all. Um, we'll see how we go with the build. Hopefully it all works out. So this was only the second time in building a shelf. I had that little shelf that I'd built, which was quite easy to kind of put together, but this was gonna to have to fit multiple units. So the main trick was that I was gonna to have to divide the shelf into three even bays that would fit the racks. And I wasn't really aiming to mount the racks at all. They were just gonna sit on the desk, but it was just so that everything fit nice and neat and was separated and it also offered support in a stable way to both my larger monitor and my speakers. So originally I measured the desk and made sure that this shelf was gonna be the right length. Um, and then I had to go to the hardware store and get all the pine cut to the right lengths. And I got these little sort of leg parts cut there as well. And basically just aimed to put it together with some simple brackets and you can see me doing that here um, and I'm kind of doing it pretty ad hoc to be honest I'm not actually trying to do it with any real finesse I put some rough measurements in just kind of went for it and then I just basically double checked with the rack units that I was going to mount that they would fit neatly into the bays um, you can see here that I'm kind of having a look at how the each of the legs were going to fit and Funnily enough, they're a bit bowed, which was a bit of a pain. Um, next time I go to the hardware store, I'll definitely check that the pine that I buy isn't warped like that. Um, but for the purpose that I'm using it for, it's probably not a big deal. And I was just going to, as I said, I'm not mounting anything to these. It's just to keep them in place on the desk. And even though I'm not actually going to rack mount any of my equipment um, to this shelf, I still made sure that each bay was separated with enough space um, for those rack ears to fit neatly. So every uh, every one of my devices could basically sit side by side quite comfortably. 
And what I'm doing here is just taking the old rack apart to use uh, a couple more dividers um, for the new rack. Alright, so I've um, just finished up the fitting all the components for the bays. Um, now I'm going to put some countersunk screws in the top just to strengthen them up, which will actually straighten the panels up a little bit, make them look a little bit neater. Um, they're not looking perfect at the moment because the wood, I didn't realise when I got it cut from my hardware store, it's a little bit bent, so um, a bit warped. So things aren't lining up perfect. Um, I'm going to see how they go once I put these countersunk screws in the top. I don't think it's going to be the neatest job in the world, but I think there's some things I can do to um, fix it up maybe later if I want to or whatever, but once everything's in the rack and it's sanded and it's neat, it'll look okay, it'll do the job. So that's all that matters at the moment. Um, I'm not a carpenter, so <laughs> we'll just see how it goes and then um, hopefully all the gear fits in nicely. So let's get into that. So you can see here I'm using some countersunk screws that'll fit nice and flush um, into the top part of the board. And I could have pre-drilled these if I wanted it to be a bit neater, but once again, I'm just kind of doing this pretty rough and they're just to add a bit more support um, to each of those uh, leg panels on the shelf. Um, it's really just to make sure everything holds in place and doesn't bend later on. Cool, so now that's done, I'm uh, just gonna give it a quick sand all over and then it should be ready to um start setting back up in the studio. So the next thing to do was sand all the edges and make things nice and smooth because you don't want your shelf having any sharp edges or anything like that um, when you're moving around in the studio. Um, you'd be surprised when you're working behind a desk how often you need to uh, bump against stuff and it's just nice to sort of soften all the edges. It also makes the shelf look a bit more aesthetically pleasing once you um, sort of taper off the edges and the corners. It just makes the shelf, shelf come together a bit nicer. Sweet, so that's done. Um, it's looking a bit neater now. It's all sanded and stuff. Um, just got to do a quick vacuum and then we're going to go back to the studio and set it all back up. And um, hopefully everything fits all nice and neat and we've got everything happening. Let's do it. Cool, so um, it's actually fitting quite nicely on the desk. I think once everything is um, sitting on top of it and everything's mounted into the desk, it's going to sit a bit more flush um, once there's a bit of weight on it and the TV's on it and everything's in the rack. So it's um, it's looking pretty good so far. What I've got to do is I bought some little rubber stoppers that I'm going to put on the bottoms of this and then, and then I've got to do some soldering. So I'll put the feet on this, get that ready and then we'll get into some soldering. Cool, so basically um, I already have um, a heap of mic lines um, at the back of the room where my drum kit is set up and those leads are just permanently there because it's easy just to have them set up and I can grab them at any time, plug uh, any microphone in and run to my drums or my guitars or whatever. So these are the input um, ends, so the male ends um, that usually go into my interface and what I'm going to be doing with these is snipping off all of the XLR ends and putting some TRS cables on those so they all go into the patch bay now. So obviously a solution to this was that I could have just bought a loom that had XLRs on one end, female XLRs, and then TRS leads on the other. But I basically decided that I might save some money and buy some connectors from my local uh, JCAR, which is an electronic shop here in uh, Australia. And I went to JCAR and got a whole bunch of good TRS connectors and um, basically snipped off all these XLRs and then made sure to label 
which input they were from before. Previously, I have all my XLRs always labeled um, with their channel number, but I then kept those stickers there so I knew which channel I was dealing with when I would patch them back in later. So after that, it was just time to start putting everything back together. So I slotted everything into the rack spaces I wanted them in, mounted all my gear and just made sure that it sat nicely. Um, and I think, you can, as you can see here, everything's starting to look pretty good. Awesome, so I've got everything in the racks. I think it's looking pretty neat. Um, now I've just got to start cabling up, but um, everything's all good. It's gonna be awesome. All right, so it's all done. Um, Behind me, I've got the new setup happening. You can see that the shelves are up. Um, my preamps are now in a heap of racks, so I'll just show you all that. 1073, the new preamps on the side there, patch bay in the middle, and then the interfaces on the left there behind the laptop. And, um, and basically what I'm thinking to do is that the patch bay will be in the middle because um, I just need to get things sometimes in and out of there and the interfaces are maybe a bit obscured by the laptop which isn't ideal I guess but I'm not really going to be touching the interfaces a lot because all of my new preamps over here on the right are going to be driving everything now so I'm not really ever everything's just going to be lined in patched in through the patch bay and then basically like a set and forget kind of thing. So it should be good. I'm gonna start testing it out over the next few weeks. Stay tuned, because I've got a whole heap of new exciting stuff happening all the time. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit like and hit subscribe. And if you've got any questions about this new setup and new build and the new patch bay, or any of the preamps that I've got, please hit me up in those comment sections down below. I'm Mitch from the DIYrecordingstudio.com and I'll catch you soon. Oh, and a quick note, uh, you might notice that this setup that I have now behind me, I've actually reconfigured the patch bay arrangement since I made that last video. So towards the end, I had my laptop off to the left, but I got a new interface and I have a video coming up about that, which is pretty exciting. And that new interface basically meant that I had to change the arrangement of my studio. So. I've rearranged where the patch bay was. It's now on the left over, over here, and I'll have a video on that soon. I swapped the patch bay out of the center, and it's now a free space for all my cables to run through, and my laptop sits in the middle below my larger monitor behind me. And this actually has helped create an even better workflow again. Studios are kind of this funny thing. You start to build and put things in place, and then you realize, hey, my workflow is maybe being hampered by something and then you kind of re everything around and I think that's part of all of us as studio engineers we kind of can't help but tinker and change things about so I've kind of optimized my setting a little bit further since that last video was made and I thought I'd better point that out because I think the setup I've got right now is pretty spot on but thanks again for tuning in I'm Mitch from the DIY recording studio.com and I'll catch you soon